Hello, chess friends, and welcome to your side of chess channel, and welcome to an incredible game that I found on the official CCRL chess on website. We have here Stock 315 against another top engine, Ethereal, in a beautiful Kadokan defense. And the Kadokan defense, I think, is a really popular opening, uh, especially, I think, among beginners when you start to play chess. When you're new to chess, I think many of us have tried at least sometimes in our lives the Kadokan defense. And actually, we'll see here even the main line with really the most often line uh, that's possible in. Um, in the Kadokan defense so in my opinion a really really instructive game so pay good attention I think you can use many of these elements in your own games in the beautiful Kadokan defense so let's see now the game Stockfish opened with the move e4 Ethereal's response was c6 the Kadokan d4 d5 after from knight to c3 we have now the main line after d takes e4 knight to e4 after bishop to f5 hitting the knight we have knight to g3 uh, counter attack against the bishop bishop to g6 and now after move knight to f3 we're using many times both of these knights in in order to attack further the bishop on g6 after knight to d7 we have bishop to d3 knight to f6 kingside casting and after e6 bishop takes g6 h takes g6 and okay so far nothing spectacular but i think we can already notice several things about this position the main issue and it's i think the only issue nothing wrong with black's position but here we have really a structural weakness which is of course now this double problem structure on the g file so as i said it's not a spectacular weakness but you see now how stockfish will battle against these weaknesses so as i said you have to really know what you're doing now in the next couple of moves because here after move c4 the stockfish play uh, now stockfish is saying okay you have a double pawn structure and i have also the space advantage notice uh, that the stockfish pawns are all on the already on the fourth rank on the other hand black's pawns are only on the sixth rank so we have here now a lack of space also a little bit in black's position so bishop to e7 queen to e2 bishop to f4 and after rook to e8 notice that the queen is lined up on the e-file so if something clears on the e-file the queen could be in danger so that's why stockfish does the same if the d file opens then of course black queen is going to be in danger so now after move queen to b6 uh, hitting the pawn on b3 stockfish protects the pawn with rook to b1 a uh, queen to a5 hitting now the pawn on a2 a3 and after queen to a4 now comes a very important approach here by stockfish 15 stockfish launches immediately the flank attack on the king side and this is the way they go because there is a certain rule in chess that says that you should attack the side on the board where you have a better activity with your minor pieces. I think this is a perfect example of this. We have now really four pieces already aiming towards the king side so that's why a flank attack on the king side really makes sense. We should not touch anything here. Basically black is a little bit better here on the queen side so that's why we're defending the queen side but we are attacking now uh the king side with our beautiful peace activity rule from a to d8 we have bishop to g5 we're trying to get rid of the key defender of the h5 square the knight of course we are trying to get bishop to f6 and maybe open the position with the move uh h5 queen to b3 we have c5 locking now the position and now b6 was played by ethereal ethereal doesn't want to tolerate of course the space advantage now that stockfish built here also on the queen side for instance if you play knight to d5 it seems tempting maybe to even simplify the game enough but look at this actually after knight to e4 bishop to g5 h takes g5 is now white continuation and th things could get very tricky after something like e5 that we would love to play look at this knight to d6 is going to happen so you're getting destroyed by this powerful octopus knight on d6 so you could maybe try something else instead of this move e5 maybe you could try now the move b6 but the main goal is white's uh, move g3 don't forget about this because look at this effort uh, something like d takes c5 e5 king to g2 and i'm not seeing good ways how black is going to defend the potential age file attack so i think with the space advantage with the pawn on the fifth rank here that uh, occupies the f6 h6 where black could have really many position but also many tactical problems in the game so that's why after move c5 here immediately b6 was ethereal's continuation so not this move knight to d5 in the continuation knight to e5 we have knight takes e5 and after d takes e5 the knight is hanging knight to d5 and now stockfish makes a huge decision queen to g4 lining up the queen where also the king is so far the king is not in danger but with the potential h5 move we are opening the g file and look at this this is already already uh, weird I, I would say it like this it's not dangerous already but i 
already feel sort of a tension here when the queen is coming like this in the active way into the game so already already black has to play now really the best defensive move so of course you cannot take b uh, bishop on c5 here because the rook on d8 is hanging so that's why Ethereum took with b takes c5 knight to e4 stock which includes now this uh, knight in a beautiful uh, on a beautiful square we have now bishop to g5 and after queen to g5 Again, with the same idea, we want to just play h5, open uh, somehow the g file, and maybe, if possible, also include the rook on the g file. Maybe rook to d3, rook to g3 is sort of an idea. Of course, not immediately, but as a long-term plan, this could be the way to go. So here, Ethereum tries c4 with the preparation to play c3. We have now rook to e1, and actually c3 is not working immediately. It's also sort of an idea for black. But this move has to be prepared for it. You cannot just rush into this move because after b takes c3, knight to c3, the queen is hanging, so you cannot pick up the pawn. So you would be forced to pick up this one. But actually, look at this with the move h5, queen to e7. Maybe you could get the queen into the game by look at this with queen to g3 we are solving every uh, tactical problem now after g takes h5 look at this c4 knight to uh, c7 look at this knight to f6 is a motif that is present now through the whole game this fork against the king and the rook so again the game could be over here for black so as i said c3 is a motif but this move has to be prepared further with some other activities so that's why queen to c2 played by uh ethereal we have g3 Preparing again this idea, king to g2, rook to h1, and h5. We are trying desperately now to open the h file. That's now our main attacking motif here. So in the continuation c5, we have h5, g takes h5, queen to h5, after knight to e7. Uh, here the theory engine is trying to get new defenders into the game. After rook to c1, kick away the queen. The queen has to now step back and now knight to d6. A beautiful move here by stock for 15, getting this knight on a beautiful square. This is now the so-called octopus knight on the sixth rank attacking many squares against black scam so already already a bad position for black so after move knight to d6 we have now the move g6 a counter attack by ethereal if you play something like rook to f8 if you try maybe to defend the position like this then you get destroyed with this idea rook to c4 with rook to h4 and again you get destroyed on the h file look at this there are not so many pieces on the board, but still Stockfish always manages to complicate things uh, with all of these pieces. So look at this, after knight to d6 and g6, Stockfish steps back now, but still stays still on the g file, where of course the king is still in danger. So we have knight to f5, trying to get rid of this annoying knight to d6, knight to e4, rerouting the knight to an f6. Uh, we have here king to g7 by Ethereum, and now queen to f6. Uh, and queen to e5 of course here is never a possibility because you get here knight to f6 and uh, you get the check and also the queen is hanging so after knight to e4 we have king to g7 we have queen to f6 the check king to g8 rook to b1 kick away the queen and after queen to c2 now comes a very important move queen to g5 and there's nothing that can be done again knight to f6 is the threat even if you play something like king to uh, g7 now uh, then king to g2 again with the preparation to play queen to h1 if you try for instance to compete on the h file this is also not working because of queen to f6 and now look at this the rooks will be disconnected so you will lose the, lose the rook on the on d8 so it's simply not working even if you try something like rook to d3 in this particular position again queen to f6 king to g8 and now with queen to g5 rook to d8 we can also include this rook on the seventh rank so again this is not a good game anymore uh, for black so as i said after move queen to g5 many threats are here king to f8 what's now uh ethereum's continuation stock which continues with king to g2 the normal plan trying of course to include the rook uh, into the game on the h file queen to d3 attacking now the knight further we have now the move g4 G uh, rook to d4 here by ethereal a counter attack against the knight on e4 but this is simply too slow after g takes f5 rook to e4 now comes the stunner f6 and actually the game is over um there's simply this checkmate threat on g7 whatever you do um, in the game king to g8 was played this is not good but even if you play for instance rook to d8 the problem is now this stunner rook from e to d1 um you can of course um, step back or you can of course maybe pick up here and uh the rook on d1 but now after a couple of checks you have to get in front of the rook now we pick up the queen and uh, the rook will be lost also here on on d8 so really really wild stuff so 
as I said, after move f6 in the game, king to g8 was played, and after rook to h1 in this position, ethereal resigned. So there's simply no defense, even if you try something like rook to d8, look at this, rook to h8, queen to h6, and this would be, again, a beautiful, beautiful checkmate here. So really incredible game. You see, Stockfish doesn't need so much. There are so many uh, opportunities even when you don't have so many pieces on uh, on the board at least you have to provoke weaknesses this is a game that shows the power of weaknesses there were really not so many weaknesses in the position but in the beginning uh, after move c4 notice two elements we have a space advantage for white here but also uh, as a disadvantage for black um, here we have already a double pawn structure so this were really the two weaknesses that Stockfish built his all attack on. So, in my opinion, really, really instructive game how to play against the Kadokan defense because this is a position that it has been played many, many uh, games in history, even in top grandmaster level. So, maybe you can use some of these methods in your or game against this beautiful Kadokan defense. So, okay, I hope that you enjoyed the game. I really enjoyed it a lot. Interesting ideas of the Kadokan for sure. If you want to see more about the Kadokan defense here on my YouTube chat channel, cover, uh, I I've covered many great games so far, top engine games, but also top grandmaster games. Uh, here's the link of our whole playlist. And if you like this content, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you soon with some more videos and what to say. Chess is the best, of course.